Hi, today I'm going to show you how to test your diagnostics on your computer for your car. What I have is a 1995 Toyota Camry XLE. So the first thing you'll need to do, if you look right here, is your fuse box. So you pull it open, and there's two little things here to grab, and you slide it down, and this should come right out. Now, in here you'll see your diagnostic port. The next thing you'll need is your sensor. I have an OBD2 Elm327 interface, which runs through Bluetooth to your, your smartphone. Uh, now I have an Android, so you plug it in. You'll notice the lights come on. Then, you will need to get out your phone. And you'll need to get a copy of a program called Torque. I like this program so much, I actually purchased it. It was only like $5 or so. But this thing will tell you a lot of information about your car. Matter of fact, hold on a minute. I'm going to set this up here. And plug it into a little carrier for the windshield. Okay, now you'll notice right offhand that it's got a connection to the satellite for GPS, the phone's connected, and the interface is connected. Now it is probing the car. So I will need to start the car. Notice my service engine light will be on. Let's close these doors. Open the windows here. So, we know there's a problem. So, what is the problem? Here's what you'll do you go into Torque and you'll find OBD check fault codes. Select that and push the button. Oh, I didn't connect the interface. I'm still waiting on it to connect. Let me go back. Okay, now you can see the car icon stop flashing and disconnected. So let's tap. It's requesting fault codes. And this can take a few moments. It's like 19, 23, 25, yeah, 6 Yes, yeah, so I do need to get a new windshield. Somebody's head did that. They weren't wearing their seatbelt at the time. I have an idea on fixing that, but I'll have to show you that in another video. There's actually a way you can get rid of these cracks. It's really quite easy. Okay, so we're at 94%. It's getting there. And there we go. There's one fault code. This is the PO136 error code. It's the O2 sensor malfunctioning of Bank 1 Sensor 2. I don't feel like changing it, but what you can do is clear the code. So if you go into your menu, you hit clear faults on ECU. Let me see if I can get this all within the thing here as you can see it. Okay, I can't show you that. But as soon as you click it, the check engine light will immediately go off. Bam, it's gone. Now this is going to take it a few seconds while it clears the codes. You know, it resets the whole system here. And I can actually take and show you what exactly it's complaining about. So you go into your real-time information. Let me go over here. You wait for the gauges to recenter. Alright, go down. Add two new things for display. We want should be a graph. Yes, a graph. All right. And we're gonna take our O2 sensor. Scroll quite a bit here. There we go. O2 sensors. Okay. So it's a. Temperature has been reached. 
Yeah, it even talks to you and tells you what's going on with your car. So we want O2 sensor one. We want to find the, not the ratios, but the actual sensors. Here we go. See so how they light them up. O2 volts bank one, sensor one. We want to add that one. Make it medium. And position it here. Let me rotate this so you can see what's going on. Okay, that's what a normal one looks like. Now I'm going to add a second display and show you the sensor that's bad. So we need graph. Way back down here. Find that second sensor. Okay, we're getting close. There it is. Okay. And we want medium. Should be able to put that right beside it. And this is what mine is looking like. Now, when you hit the gas, you should see it change. There you go. Notice how that one changed? This is how you can tell your sensor is bad. Because it's not... You put gas to it, you're not getting a readout. Now, this can be because it's dirty or just plain bad. I've had this car for about a year now and I just recently started acting up but it even shows you the high points and the low points on your sensor now a torque also has some other nice little features here uh, I'll show you your engine RPM there's a whole old dashboard of digital goodies for you vacuum lines coolant temperature speed everything you need to know and even as a complete system workout here depending on how up to date your car is I lucked out because my car is a 95 and technically 95's have OBD1 but because it's a Toyota and it was made within a special year they've actually added OBD2 with limited capabilities now yours you know this you'll have more options available if you have a car that's made in 96 or above And that's how you do it. After you're done, you just go ahead, hit back. And you turn off your torque, hit back, and wait for it to exit. Sensor's clear, car's running. And that stupid idiot lights off. Now it'll come back on after five or six trips, but my the whole point of it is the way I see it, okay, I know the sensor's bad. Why is it, you know, I don't care. It doesn't, you know, it just makes my gas mileage worse. So, I'm going to take and disconnect the sensor, or the connector port here. Again, that's what you want to buy. And, uh, that's pretty much all that's to it. I mean, if the check engine light comes on again, then I'll... You know, I'll do the exact same thing to figure out what's going on. Put this back in there. But, yeah. For the most part, if you know what the problem is, you know it's not major, you can just simply clear the code out. And if you find, uh, next time you turn it on, you do a diagnostic, and you figure out there's something else going on, then, well, you have the information you need. It even shows you the code's you know if there's a different code that comes up it'll tell you how you can find out what it is uh, Torque is just really a good program for this there's other ones but I found I like this one the best well thanks for tuning in and have a good day